Hey everyone, welcome back to Rough Cut Faith. We are back again this week to solve all the problems. <laughs> all the problems. All the problems. <laughs> all the problems. Just with our own conversation. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate yeah. you solving mine, Mike. Yeah, it's all I good. well, I've tried for years. Yeah, and, I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. So today we're uh, we're going to tackle a, a a topic that I think is important for us, but it's not one that we typically think much about. Mm -hmm. um, and that is how important it is for us to engage with material, with thoughts mm -hmm. that are different than our own. Mm -hmm. um, we talked a few weeks ago about how to disagree well. So this is different than that. This is yeah. not, this is not a, uh, another conversation about disagreement, mm -hmm. but it, the, we, we live in a world with um, especially our country is a pluralistic country. Yeah. Multiple different political thoughts, sociological thoughts, religious thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like everybody online has an opinion <laughs> about something. And, uh, and we're bombarded with whether it's media or books or social media or yeah. um, movies or uh, uh, TV shows, any type of anything that we engage with, yeah. we are absorbing thoughts on how the world works yeah on what this looks like yeah um and what is real what is true so i think that it's important for us to talk about this because we have to be able to develop that discernment to actually wade into those waters yeah and uh and and think through why we might disagree with someone but also the value in what that person may also be saying mm. so you've had I mean, you read quite a bit, whether it's Sometimes. reading, <laughs> yeah, you go through seasons. I go through seasons, yeah. um, Whether yeah. it's a physical book or an audio book, you're yeah. engaging with material sure. quite often. Yeah. Um, do you always read people that you agree with? No, I yeah. don't actually. Okay. Um, and, uh, and that was something that probably started a little more intentionally within the last eight to 10 years. Um, where I began to say, no, I just need to engage with different thought because one of the things that you that I, I think ministry has taught me is I, I end up interacting with people that think differently than me. Mm -hmm. And I want to be able, um, I had a prof in college years ago that was like, you know, don't say anything about your opponents or people that disagree with you that they wouldn't agree with. Mm. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so I wanted to at least begin the process of trying to understand the different philosophical uh, mm -hmm. and foundational differences uh -huh. around a variety of topics. And, um, you know, because as much as, as much as we like to think that we are broad, mm -hmm. uh, in our perspective or we're open, a lot of us, we tend to really focus in on the, the voices we're most comfortable with. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then we kind of will either dismiss or ignore voices that disagree with us, or we'll, uh, just make a caricature of it, an mm -hmm. oversimplification of a position. And so I think practically um that that affects all kinds of areas like yeah. you mentioned but but specifically as christians or within the church when you start reading uh and engaging with people that have different theological convictions that makes a makes a big difference in how you approach someone mm -hmm. um in being able to go like to be charitable towards them but yeah. also to recognize um, there are massive differences between our convictions. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, often where you'll find people are okay to do that is with cults. <laughs> They'll be like, oh, well, yeah. like this is a, th they say they're Christian, but they're not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so they'll read about that. So yeah. they'll be able to identify a few things there, um, but not necessarily all of the things. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we won't do that within like mainline Christianity, evangelical yeah. circles. Will... Well, faith circles seem to be the most, mm -hmm. uh, should I say, <laughs> lack the most generosity in yeah. hearing other other sides of things yeah. and engaging with that. Yeah, and so it really, I just, because, because of our ministry and the people that come to us in a variety of different ways, I want to make sure that I'm that somebody's not coming in and catching me completely off guard mm. with things. Mm -hmm. Um, even if, even as within the church around social issues, yeah. um, or different frameworks for interpreting scripture, um, on a variety of topics, I want to make sure that, um, as 
to the best of my ability as I'm being formed in my faith, but I'm also understanding different perspectives. Mm -hmm. Because despite having convictions, I I can still learn that maybe my conviction, uh, the foundation for that isn't where I I don't necessarily agree with that anymore. And so maybe there's other evidence that has come up in scriptural research Mm -hmm. um, and things like that, that I want to make sure that that I'm holding to the faith that was handed down to us, but but by who, right? Yeah, yeah. And is it just the the church traditions that I grew up in mm-hmm. that I'm holding on to, or is it uh, broader to the to the church as a whole? Yeah. Um, and and the more that I've read, the more that I've been like, okay, some things I'm like, okay, I I appreciate it when I get good evidence for something. Yeah. Um, but I still may not uh, come to that conclusion right, that those right. authors would but I can at least appreciate the interpretive framework for it. Mm -hmm. I tend to not value arguments made by like, oh, like slippery slope arguments or like just things that attack people Mm -hmm. or that mischaracterize things or, or go well, like, well, like um, I use this with my kids often is like, just because like, it's the correlation does not mean (laughs) causality just because something happened at the same time, just because something Mm -hmm. is like, oh, maybe that was there, doesn't mean that actually caused it. Yeah, it's just, yeah. that's it, right? Mm-hmm. And so you tend to see within theological circles, a lot of that time mm-hmm. seems to happen. Um, pastors seem to just be most comfortable with um, with the influences that they are most comfortable with. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a, and this kind of dovetails nicely with last week's uh, conversation uh, wow, conversation, conversation <laughs> dovetails with last week's conversation. Yeah, um, about uh, what we call it deconstruction mm-hmm. and how engaging with different ideas is kind sure. of like scary. Yeah. Um, so I think that that's one of the reasons mm-hmm. is we, especially as pastors, you go, I have the truth, or oh. I know I know where to go with the truth, or I know yeah. where to find it, and. So anyone who doesn't have this, yeah. um, all of a sudden it's like, wait a minute, they're, they're talking about something different. They're mm-hmm. talking about something that's not, that I don't agree with. Mm-hmm. And so that's dangerous. Yeah. Um, I know, I think, and I, I think I shared last week a little bit about my growing up, how mm-hmm. I grew up in one faith tradition. Yeah. And we kind of like switched denominations over the course of about three or four years, mm-hmm. shifted as a family. Um, and I, I think though, because of that, because, uh, my grandfather was a pastor yeah. and in one <laughs> tradition, and then I went to a church, I grew up in this church for the first 10 years and one fundamental tradition. And then we searched for about four or five years for a different yeah. church and then settled in one that was a very different faith tradition. Yeah. Um, I started in seminary within one tradition yeah. and finished my, your like, master's left, in another <laughs> yeah left it finished a master's in a in a different but it was much more ecumenical it was mm-hmm. like it was a free methodist university yeah. that was based around um R- richard foster helped design it yeah. the the curriculum so it was a quaker who came to a free methodist <laughs> university to design a curriculum that was largely based around um, ancient Catholic, <laughs> yeah. Catholic writers yeah. and, and everything in between. And the first time I went to a residency, there were about a hundred people there. Yeah. And we all, um, everybody got to get up and say what church tradition they come from, like yeah. name, you know, where you're from, what church tradition. And my goodness, it was a multiplicity of people, yeah. uh, of different uh, traditions mm-hmm. within that room, yeah. and a, va- a vast majority of those people would say, "I grew up this. I then changed to this, and yeah. now I'm here." Like yeah. it wasn't just different churches; it was like whole. Grew sure. up Presbyterian, now I'm charismatic. Yeah. <laughs> grew up Orthodox, yeah. now I'm this. Uh, it, like it was all over the map. Yeah. So I feel like the. I feel like I've benefited so much mm. from hearing from this multiplicity. Yeah. Um, but when I was a teenager, I had to answer questions of why do you, why you believe this for 12 years Yeah. and now we're teaching this, we're talking about this. Why, why was one not true? Sure. Which one is true? Sure. Um, and then just kind of having that attitude all the way through, um, I guess I, 
I'm saying all this to say I don't approach that with fear. Yeah. Um, approach different ideas, different authors, people coming from different mm -hmm. uh, backgrounds with yeah. a lot of fear. But it surprised me <laughs> yeah. when people did. Yeah. And I remember very distinctly, uh, probably about 10 or 12 years ago, a conversation with a man who was part of the church, um, an active part of the church, who um, took umbrage with a quote that I had in a sermon. Yeah. Um, and I don't even remember who I was quoting, mm -hmm. but they had a problem because they were not from his faith tradition. Sure. And he felt like it was too far outside the box of yeah. what he was comfortable with, with quoting and um, decided to leave the church because mm -hmm. of that. Yeah. And I remember that time being very shocking to me sure. because it was, I had known him for a couple of years, felt yeah. like he was pretty discerning. Yeah. And that caused me to step back and have to reevaluate. Yeah. Is this a good thing? Like, yeah. uh, am I on the right, are we on the right track with, yeah. with processing these things differently? Yeah. It's, 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 I think the benefit of it, cause not everybody's going to sit here and go, I don't. I want to evaluate everything, yeah, right? Yeah. But it's more about learning the process of how to engage um, mm. and to have a framework to learn to be, like to recognize, oh, there, that's actually something worthwhile. Yeah. Like just because the person's name or their tradition is different than yours doesn't automatically mean it should be discounted. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, not all medical doctors, uh, you know, are are in a specific field, but in you, you may go like, well, uh, just because you're over, but I don't even know where I was going with that, Mike. <laughs> it's been a, such a long couple of days, but not all medical doctors yeah. are, are people that you would sit back and go, Oh, I, yep. They went to the right school. Right. So I'm only going to go to that going to doctor. That right. Yeah, yeah. And so you still look at it and you would go, there's still evidence that's there that I can learn from, mm -hmm. right. We can still engage with people and, 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 and understand that they they may be pointing us in a direction mm -hmm. that we need to consider yeah you know uh we can we can look at research science and different things and go okay that science seems like it's pointing this out well mm -hmm. then great that's that's awesome but but it didn't come from scripture so now for i therefore i must reject it yeah or it didn't yeah. it didn't come from someone within my tradition i'm like that's not the way we approach yeah. life yeah but the other part is is we've still got to be critical about it, mm -hmm. right? Because there's so much information that's out yep. there now that yep. is like dogmatic of, or it just, it's, it's either dogmatic or it attacks you if you disagree with it. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. it's kind of like, oh, well, it sounds right. Yeah. Or it, they seem passionate about mm -hmm. it or they seem so confident that this is right. Yeah. Yeah. That, well, then maybe I'm wrong or maybe I just, oh, that's the truth. Right, that was, yep. and, and, and I think there's different stages of that in our life. When I was young and went to Bible school, um, I grew up in a tradition um, that for the most part, like there was, there was strong doctrine, but it wasn't really taught as doctrine. Like, mm. And so I got to a school that they clarified a lot of things and they were very, like a Bible college, and they were like very dogmatic. This is it. Some of you will reject this down the road. Yeah. And, you know, and that's sad. And yeah. so they just, they didn't really present different opinions academically, mm -hmm. different theological opinions. And so I'm in my 40s now reading different theological opinions yeah. Yeah. going, where was this mm -hmm. for 20 or 30 years? Yeah. yeah, Like why was, like this is honestly this conversation or this topic or this information about scripture still valuing scripture as the inerrant word of God, mm -hmm. still valuing mm -hmm. it as inspired, yeah. but yeah. like looking at the language and walking through it. And, and I'm sitting there and I'm going, why has no one ever told me this? Yeah, well, I think that's the, 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 um, the glaring blind spot mm -hmm. in theological education. Sure. Is that, and that was my experience in seminary. Mm -hmm. um, the first one I went to, it was, here's how to defend all the things that we believe are our right. Doc, our doctrinal our doc, positions. Yeah, this is our doctrinal position. Here's how to defend it. Mm -hmm. um, now, I'm not advocating for tearing it all apart. I had yeah. another a good friend of mine who went to, um, when he was getting his master's, um, his New Testament class, 
he said it was terrible because all it was was how the New Testament wasn't written by the people we believe it was written by. Mm. So it actually ended up tearing the whole New Testament apart and removing a lot of people's um, faith in that scripture is true at mm-hmm. all. Yeah. So there's that side of it yeah. that just seeks to tear everything yeah. down. Um, but even yeah. that comes from a foundation and a framework of yeah. it can't be. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 So that's what I think. That's where I think education needs to go back to is let's look at these foundational ideas. Sure. Um, here's how we discern what is true and what is not yeah. true. And if we can like build from there. Mm-hmm. So if you conclude these doctrinal points are true, true based yeah. on scripture, at least I know that there was a foundation mm-hmm. for it and yeah. here's why. Yeah. Rather than just saying, here's the conclusion, here's how you defend yeah. it. So I think that in our discernment, um, when we engage with material, be it a book, a movie, a song, mm-hmm. a sermon, <laughs> yeah. anything that presents a worldview, yeah. it's imperative that we also have some sort of foundational understanding of where we are sure. and where that foundation, the foundation of that worldview is coming from. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, um, it's like you can make statistics say anything you want. Mm, you mm-hmm. can look at the same data and interpret it differently. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And so we need to grow in that discernment ability. My favorite class in college, um, at an undergraduate level probably was, it was a literature class and I hated literature, mm. but the prof in that class really leaned into helping us develop a framework to understand logical fallacy Mm -hmm. and to recognize it in different places. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and that was in, in written form, in speech, in film. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and so I think I walked out of that class going, I I may not know how to write better, Mm -hmm. but I know how to think and interpret better. Yeah, yeah. And I I think as a dad watching kids grow, watching my kids grow up, watching the way that things are presented as true and seeing Mm -hmm. them go like, oh, well, that guy obviously knows what he's doing because he's got 15,000 or 100,000 followers. (laughs) Yeah. You know, and so he's like, he's an expert. Mm -hmm. And so then it's like, okay, but, uh, but I can sit there and look at it and go, there's fallacy in that. Yeah. Like yeah. now I'm not going to use that word with the kids, but I'm like, it, it doesn't work out. Like mm-hmm. it doesn't, it doesn't always vibe. Yeah. And, yeah. um, and I think that's a very risky place for us as Christians to be where, um, where we're not able to exercise our thinking and processing. Mm-hmm. And so that's where I would always say, you know, not, you're not always in a season where you're going to be doing that. And not everybody is going to want to do this process yeah. of reading yeah. broadly. But I think we should be able to, you know, if we don't exercise discernment, if we don't mm-hmm. exercise a, a, a critical eye, not a criticizing eye, but a critical eye, mm-hmm. one that re- like is like something's off there, the, yeah. the one plus one doesn't equal what they're saying it does. Yeah, yeah. Um, like that's what's really important. And to not be afraid of it. Sure. I think that's what, that's what helps. That's what's helped me. Mm-hmm. I think that's what helps us. Um, as a as a people, yeah. to not fear that another person is saying something wrong, so therefore sure. I have to attack them. Yeah, um, but to to willingly listen, sure, and to listen with without judgment. Mm-hmm. Um, that doesn't mean uh, judgment and discernment are two different things. Sure. So t- to be able to listen to what someone else is saying, or to like use that example of reading a book. Yeah. Um, and just, just read it, yeah. <laughs> just read it for, here's the information, here's what's being said, yeah. here's, here's this, the view of this author. Mm-hmm. Um, and asking that question then, having that question go through your mind, well, where is he getting this? Mm-hmm. What's the foundation that yeah. he's building on? Yeah. Um, and I feel like, I, I've read a lot of people, you've read a lot of people, that mm-hmm. ultimately you would say, I could, I could buy maybe 75% of it, yep. you know? Sometimes 50, yeah. sometimes 75, sometimes it's bigger. Sometimes, sometimes less. <laughs> yeah, sometimes right? less, sometimes more. Or sometimes you can agree with the content, and mm-hmm. there are, but not the conclusion. Right, right. And I think that there, but I think there is so much value in being able to say 75% of this is great. Yep. And we don't, so what stops us from doing that is 
in the first chapter, something they say strikes at a, a dogmatic yeah. point. Like, yeah. oh, I don't, I, uh, yeah. I, I don't like this. Yep. It makes me feel angry that yeah. he's saying this. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes, and then we have to examine yeah. ourselves. Okay, okay, do you feel angry because you're not being validated? <laughs> <laughs> because, yeah, because they disagree with because you. Because they disagree with or, me. Yeah. Like, that's what I hate in myself. Yeah. I yeah. feel when someone dis, when I read something that disagrees with a, a foundational point or yeah. something important to me, yeah. um, I get really upset. Yeah. And I feel like I want to lash out yeah. um, or just close the book up and not go back to it. Yep. Like that's what I feel like because it challenges me and I don't like being challenged. Yeah. My natural proclivity is just keep everything yeah. normal and peaceful and safe. Yeah. And, and so when I feel challenged and I want to push back, um, but if I, if I do that, I miss the good stuff. Yeah. I miss like the, the really important things that he had to say in chapter mm-hmm. five yeah. that I'm like, Oh, you, that's fantastic. Sure. Um, and then maybe I needed to be challenged mm-hmm. too. Maybe yeah. that was a good thing for me to be challenged. Well, I mean, I, and I, I may not come to a different conclusion, yeah. but the challenge made me think about why I believed what sure. I believed. Sure. I mean, so that process, this process for me has led to, I would say a different understanding of, of the church and being a part of the people of God. Mm. It's led to a different understanding of what, what is the kingdom of God? Yeah. It's yeah. led to a different understanding of end times convictions about mm-hmm. different things. Mm-hmm. It's led to like at a practical level, it's uh, affected uh, my views on alcohol. It's affected my views. Like uh, it's affected my views on the different roles uh, as, as a man and a woman within the church, mm-hmm. as well as like within, within society. Mm-hmm. Right. So there's a lot of things that, you know, when, when some things are handed to you from a, uh, you grow up in a certain culture, in a yeah. certain set of values that you, like, it's really a fascinating thing to come and engage with people that have a lot of those same foundational values, but their interpretations are different. Yep. And so you're like, okay, wait a minute. Like, so, so now for me, like to watch somebody that disagrees with someone else, I see like you're elevating yourself mm. and your opinion as, mm-hmm. as the, this is the standard, the standard. Yep. right? Be- yep. Because you're saying, Oh, I'm, I want, uh, we're honoring scripture. Those guys aren't. Yeah. But yeah. then, but then you actually go and you read those other guys and you go, they're honoring scripture. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And they're not taking shots at you. They're just saying the conclusions to the other things could be like misconstruing scripture yeah. as well. And so it's like, okay, so then you find two people reading scripture, interpreting it sometimes similarly, sometimes differently. Yep. And you go, well, where am I at? Yeah. Yeah. Like, which do I agree with? Yeah. yeah. And that process, that's where I think as a, as a young man, it was nice when somebody handed me a book and said, here's what you believe, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? Okay. Yeah. Like I was catechized into mm-hmm. a specific set of beliefs mm-hmm. and framework and that's it, right? Yeah. And then as an adult that is continuing to read and to study and going, many of the values that I grew up with in, a, in more of a fundamental tradition, mm-hmm. I still hold to. Yeah. The foundational yeah. things are there, mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm allowing it to affect the way that I allow scripture to teach me. Um, I'm a re I'm allowing it to affect the way that I'm going, okay, listen, here's the way that the culture influences the application of this scripture. Yeah. Instead yeah. of me just going, Nope, this is it. Uh-huh. Here's what was handed to me. And I'm going to hand that to you as well. Um, and so, so I would hope that as a people of God or as Christians or as people that are connected to us either here at the Grove or that watch, you know, Rough Cut or any of the other things that we do, that we would be people that are interest, curious enough to learn from other people mm-hmm. and, um, and critical enough to go, um, that's, that doesn't pass the vibe check. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that they would work out a convictional understanding that's not based on a cultural perspective or just what they're most comfortable with, but to go, no, we, we want scripture to be our authority. Mm-hmm. We want the Bible to guide us. We want the spirit of God to lead us. And so what does that look like? Yeah. So they start learning from people that, that have loved the Lord, yeah. you know, throughout yeah. history and time yeah. Yeah. and have done their best to honor him and to recognize, uh, that guy, 
I disagree with some of that stuff. Yeah. Where did it come from? Mm -hmm. Like when you start reading some of the other early church fathers, you start recognizing sometimes there's really nothing new. (laughs) (laughs) It's just like, oh, that's that, that happened here. That happened here. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And so, yeah, I think that's where it it really comes down to exercising our ability to think well. Mm. And I I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's wrong to change your mind on things. No. Mm -mm. I, I think that there's a, we want to be dogmatic. Mm-hmm. There's, there are times in our lives and engaging with different people that we kind of say, oh, well, I've heard it said so many times. Mm-hmm. Um, we well, you changed your mind on this. You've, you've gone woke. Yeah. You've gone, which I think is a ridiculous term that we need to explore yeah. <laughs> more in depth soon. Mm. Um, but the, the, uh, the way that people talk about your views, yeah. um, really comes down to them saying, you no longer have my view. Mm -hmm. And so I'm denigrating you. Like you've just lowered your more, your immature, your progressive, your whatever, like whatever moniker seems bad to them. That's what they call you because you no longer agree with them. But I I feel like as we, as we move through life, Mm -hmm. maturity should cause us to, look at the views that we had 20 years ago and say, what was that based on? Yeah. You know, that that's, and this, I feel like this is kind of the theme we keep coming back to. Sure. What was that foundational element uh, um, that that view was based on? Sure. And was it based on scripture or was it based on someone's interpretation of scripture Mm -hmm. or a tradition or, or, or a church tradition that just told me this was Mm -hmm. scripture? Yeah. Um, and not everybody's going to be a biblical scholar. Not mm-hmm. everyone in church is going to be a biblical scholar. Yeah. So I think that's, uh, this may be tangential, but that's, a, that's the imperative on church leadership to sure. be able to be the biblical scholars yeah. then. Because if not, my expectation is not that everyone who attends a church spends eight hours that week study, doing word studies. Yeah. Um, but I should. <laughs> if yeah. I'm preaching, I should be yeah. doing those word studies and making sure that I'm able to explain it to people, um, but that I, I feel like as you move through and uh, um, draw on these foundations that you have mm-hmm. um, that feed your faith, that your yeah. faith is built on, that you keep going back to that foundation and saying, is, is my conclusion here, is this belief or this mm-hmm. view that I have carried with me, yeah. is that based on the foundation of my faith or is mm-hmm. that based on somebody else telling me that that's what yeah. it is. It's, it's interesting in uh, like, as you were describing all of that, it's two things popped into mind. One, I, I would probably say that theologically my values are probably more conservative than they have ever been. Mm. Um, and yet those, those values and convictions theologically have affected the way I engage in community and with people Mm -hmm. so that I don't feel like many of my really conservative, theologically conservative friends look at me as theologically conservative. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And many of my liberal friends don't think that I'm, they they think I'm like a fundamental, (laughs) you're you're way too conservative. Yeah. Yeah. So I find that, um, that the, the weirdness in it is, when you start exploring what the foundations are, right, mm-hmm. you begin to go, oh, if if this is not, if this is true, then I have to reevaluate this. Yeah. yeah. Right? And so it's not, it's not really a house of cards. Uh-huh. It's more like a, it's more like an interlocking structure. Yeah. That you go, yeah. okay, if, if the foundation is firm, mm-hmm this over here isn't really attached to the foundation. Yeah, yeah. And so I need to reevaluate where did that come from, Mm -hmm. right? And that's that process I think of, that's why I think faith takes time. (laughs) Yeah. You know, Um, and and it's probably why I'm, as at at my age now, way more patient with people that are trying to think through Mm -hmm. theological positions. Yeah. And what what do certain things mean? Because, I think, you know, I could say, well, here's where I'm at and, and this is why I'm here. Mm-hmm. And if they ask, I could probably do that. Yeah. Um, and have at times, but I usually like to ask more questions for them because 
I want them to come to those conclusions, not just be told what to believe. Yeah. I want, I want people to understand yeah. their faith because if, I think, I think we've talked about it before that if you can manipulate somebody into a position, someone else will manipulate them out of yep. it yep. or, or they will manipulate themselves out of it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because if you have, if you have a faith that can be destroyed with two or three questions, mm-hmm. then it's not faith. Yeah. It's, it's a belief system mm-hmm. that, um, it's pretty flimsy yeah. <laughs> yeah, because you have to, you have to be able to think through all of the implications. Mm-hmm. Um, and if somebody comes along and you're like, Oh, I believe in Jesus. I believe in the virgin birth. I believe in inerrancy of scripture. Yeah. And someone comes along and says, well, tell me about inerrancy. What does that mean? Yeah. Um, and all of a sudden you're like, your faith just gets blown up because yeah. You're not sure now if Isaiah wrote all of Isaiah or yeah. if he had like some other helpers that wrote yeah. the second half or, yeah. you know, like if that's the type of thing that blows your whole faith up, yeah. then what was your faith really founded on yeah. to begin with? Yeah. And it's, I think that's the thing that I've come to appreciate and at least recognize is that in biblical research and scholarship, there are both sides of it. Yeah. You'll have people that will pour into scripture and go... Uh, I don't buy it anymore. Mm-hmm. And you'll get people that pour into scripture and go, I, I have found life here that I yeah. never thought yep, yep. imaginable. Yeah. And so it's like, okay, um, can I learn from the person that goes, I searched this and poured my life into it and I don't buy it. Yeah. Can I still learn from them when it comes to an understanding and interpreting scripture? Mm-hmm. I would say yes, as long as I recognize the foundational framework for their conclusions, Mm, mm -hmm. right? But the work itself, if I'm looking at purely an interpretive framework, sometimes, sometimes that, that matters, right? Um, But in the same sense, the people that I really value, right? Mm -hmm. They're the guys that have like, that have poured their life into scripture, studying it, understanding it. You know, sometimes even just like a small minutia mm-hmm. of a, a letter or uh, a, a word within the broader language and its usage throughout the ancient world. And, and they, they come out of it and they go, wow, God is more glorious than I ever imagined. Yeah, yeah. Like there is more beauty here than I ever yes. imagined. And it's yes. like, like, I'm like, I'm like, I love finding that. And I think that's why it's so important then... To go back to our main topic, sure. that's why it's so important for us to engage with things mm-hmm. that challenge us, yeah. to engage with things that challenge our frameworks, yeah. that challenge our value systems, that, yeah. that may look at it a little differently, mm-hmm. or writers that exist outside of the bubble that we tend to sure. find ourselves in. Yeah. Um, because if I'm not being forced to look into it differently... Sure then I'm not finding a lot of beauty there. Yeah. Um, it's, it's just, it's kind of like a book on a shelf. Sure. I've got this belief. Yep. It's right up there on the shelf. I'll yeah. pull it out when I need it. Yeah. But I don't really think about it other than that. And, yeah. and to read or engage with, talk to people, um, listen to podcasts that, of people that say things differently, that mm-hmm. think through things differently. I have to pull that book, that belief back off the shelf and look through it and go, is, oh, oh yeah. I don't know, I, what was this based on? Yeah. Was, is this true? Is yeah. this real? Mm-hmm. And, and if, I'm, if I'm honest then, yeah. if I allow myself to be kind of work through that process, mm-hmm. um, I may come to the same conclusion. Yeah. Like, yep, I do. Yep. <laughs> I believe it. Yep. <laughs> that guy, you know, I appreciate <laughs> what he had to say. I don't, I don't buy where he eventually yep. went with it or the conclusion or the, yeah. uh, the foundation he was building off yep. of. Okay, now yeah. I... Now I see, but without that, I would never have examined that belief mm-hmm. that I had. Yeah, deepened your own deepened understanding, it, yeah. your own convictions right, and things, right? right? right. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think that's where, that's where um, specifically in and around theological topics, I think it matters for Christians, mm-hmm. right? Because as our faith becomes our own, as our convictions become more fully developed, right, it pushing those beliefs up against others yeah. really matter. And that's where I think um, I would also say that it's really important that when you hear someone else that holds a different position, you need to understand where is where is their where is their position coming from? Yeah. And yeah. what's the foundation of their position? Because mm-hmm. you'll often find people that will uh, that or Christians that will make an argument solely from 
like psychology yeah. or solely from so sociology mm -hmm. or solely from their experience or solely mm -hmm. from what was handed to them from somebody mm -hmm. else's experience. Or from a verse taken out of context. <laughs> or from a verse taken out of context, yeah. right? And so then you've got to go, what's their foundation yeah. for this? Yep. How, how do I, again, and, and unless it's kind of like, it's kind of like I used to run. Yeah. <laughs> it's sad to say, but I used to run. Mm -hmm. I don't really anymore. Um, and so I've lost the, the lungs for it. Mm. I've lost the, mm -hmm. like I could still hop in and do something, but not at the level that I was before yeah. I had, I probably hurt my knee. It's like yeah. this, it's like, Oh, that, that was something that I, I recognize there's a falling off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say, unless we exercise our discernment, there is also yeah. a falling yes, off. Yes. Yeah. And, and so it's just easier to be angry, to get into a rut yeah. or to just like not really think mm -hmm. so um to just allow the frustration of yeah. disagreement yeah to stop us from yeah. engaging yeah and i think i think from a theological framework it matters yeah right yeah. there's a lot of stuff that matters about how we live out our faith and how we engage with people mm -hmm. right and how we grow um and uh emotionally mentally spiritually physically like in how we develop as humans yeah. It, it, it matters that there's plenty of topics out there that affect other people within the church mm -hmm. if we mm -hmm. if we get them wrong. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Um, or the practical expression of it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. hurts people. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if there's necessarily a whole lot more to add to it. Yeah. I, I think that I would like to end our conversation talking a little bit about some elements of discernment. That sure. Um, that can help us as we engage sure. with material that may be challenging to us mm -hmm. um, rather than just getting angry or yeah. saying you're wrong. Um, how, what are, what are some aspects of discernment that we can bring into those conversations or those engagements? Sure. Um, for me, one thing that comes to mind is that um, is scripture as a Christian, we look at scripture, mm -hmm. um, but of course there's a multiplicity of interpretations. Sure. So I think that I, for me, I look at Christ mm -hmm. and think if this person is calling me to do something that, um, would be different than the character of Christ, mm -hmm. would, would challenge the character of Christ or, or would or say, the teachings of, or the teachings yeah. of, of Christ, um, that gives me pause mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that, that, pushes me to say, okay, what are those foundations? Because I, I can, I can be reading a book and reading along and agreeing with everything, um, or kind of like tracking with everything. Mm -hmm. And there's, but then there would be something that's like, oh, that doesn't feel right. Yeah. So that's the, that's the part where I say, okay, that doesn't feel right. Why yeah. doesn't it feel yeah. right? Um, this argument seems to be making an argument based on, uh, a scripture, let me look at that scripture. Mm -hmm. Is that in context? Yeah. Um, is that within the whole scope of scripture is what's being said in this verse mm -hmm. consistent with the whole scope of scripture? Yeah. yeah. Is it consistent with what Christ taught? Is it mm -hmm. consistent with how we saw Christ live and yeah. the accounts in the gospels? So that, that initial point for me yeah. is this doesn't feel right. Yeah. Um, and I've had those times where I said, it doesn't feel right. And I've looked and said, and then went, <laughs> oh, oh, that's me. <laughs> oh, I, it doesn't feel right because it's challenging yeah. a long held belief that yeah. I don't think I ever examined the foundation yeah. of. So why do I believe this? Mm -hmm. And, and it's made me look at that. But there's other times where I've said that doesn't feel right. Yeah. Oh, now I see why, because he took this verse in Romans, yeah. made it something different. Yeah. The whole context of that chapter is not about this. It's about something else. Sure. That's where, it, that's why it doesn't feel right. Yeah. So paying attention to your own emotional state and your yeah. own feeling as you're reading yeah. and engaging is really yeah. a, an important step to start examining. Yeah. I, I would probably, I totally agree with that. For me, it's specifically in and around books. Mm -hmm. um, I start, I start before I even read. Yeah. I, I, I usually will read like who endorsed the book, mm. like who mm -hmm. are the voices that are people are like, Oh, this is great. Yeah. And do I, do I know them? Yeah. Do yeah. I, do I, can I, can I put them into a camp before mm -hmm. I start to read it? Mm -hmm. Um, 
Google's great <laughs> in that <laughs> sense yeah. because I may come across an article by an author and go, oh, I'm, really, I'm really fascinated with that. Mm -hmm. um, I, th I think I may agree with it. But I'll go and I'll Google that author yeah. and I'll try to do a little bit of research mm -hmm. to just understand where they're coming from yeah. before, I <clears throat> before I enter into the conversation mm. um, it, with what they've, with, or the thoughts or the, the things that they're trying to, you know, position that usually you don't write a book unless you think somebody would benefit from it. Yeah. yeah. Right. That there's something that's there there's for them. So, yeah. so I want to understand as much as I can their framework before I read it. Mm -hmm. That's true in and out of, in and out of theology, yeah. um, into philosophy. I've been working through uh, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance mm -hmm. for years now. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, but, but I didn't go into that thinking it was a Christian book, right? <laughs> right? Right, right. Because yeah. I, I read, I was like, okay, well, Zen, obviously it's Buddhist framework, mm -hmm. you know, motorcycle maintenance. Okay, great, excited mm -hmm. about that. Motorcycle trip, great, fascinating. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I read into a little bit of the author just on the front end so that I had a, I'm coming at it going, oh, huh, okay. I know yeah. where he's coming from. So yeah. my discernment levels are already there. Yeah. Um, but I've enjoyed the process, right? Right. Same thing when I come to a book that I may pick up. Well, they don't really exist a whole lot anymore. But if I went to a Christian bookstore and was like, that book looks interesting. Yeah. I'm going to pick the book up. I'm going to do a quick look at the author or the back and mm -hmm. say, okay. Who are the voices that are there? Yeah. And if we always know the same voices that are endorsing the book, mm -hmm. we probably should read a little more broadly. Yeah. Right? <laughs> if everybody if everybody it, is like, like, oh, look, yeah. oh, look, I know these names. They're Christian yeah. celebrities. Yeah, I, yeah. I get them. I've right? read all their books. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So then it's like, but in some ways you can go, okay, I recognize these books. We give credibility to an author we may not know because we recognize who's there. Yeah. yeah. But I may look at those names and go, oh, I don't, I don't know that. Okay, mm -hmm. well, let me let me look into it. Where that? What school are they from? Who are they? What? Yeah. What? Yeah. What are, are they involved in ministry or mm -hmm. what color? Are they business or whatever? You know, it's like I want to have a I want to have a context for the voice that I'm about to engage with. Yeah. yeah. Um, before I get into the foundational levels of what's it say in scripture and how do I feel about it? Mm -hmm. um, because I don't like surprises. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, and usually I still get surprised, you know. Yeah. But, but, the, but for me, that's that's a place that I start is I look at the source, mm -hmm. and, um, but I don't make the source the only thing yeah. that interprets it, because I know plenty of people that went to schools that I wouldn't agree with. Yeah, that yeah. don't agree with the positions of those schools, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it's like okay. Like yeah. just, but it, but it gives me a context for the influences Yeah. in the same yeah. way that I think if I was to write a book someday, man, mm -hmm. if somebody went back and looked at my schools and <laughs> you know what I do, yeah. would, yeah. would they give me the benefit of the doubt to mm -hmm. say like, okay. Yeah. You're 25 years removed from graduation. And sure. A lot of life has happened in that 25 yeah. years. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so you can't necessarily be held to the doctrinal positions of that yeah. particular school. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I, I think there's a lot of value in engaging with others mm -hmm. around a topic too. Yeah. So when you if you find yourself interacting with material that challenges you, mm -hmm. um, yeah, talking to other trusted friends sure. uh, is really valuable. Yeah. I, I know that over the years. Um, the last 20 years, you and I have had so many conversations yeah. about what we're reading. Yeah. And sometimes it's like, this is really good. <laughs> I've found this to be helpful. Yeah. Other times it's, well, I'm not really sure what I think about this. What do you think? Yeah. Like, and we'll have these conversations. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of value in working that out in mm -hmm. conversation. Yeah. Um, that's part of that discernment process mm -hmm. too, is there are people that I trust that I can talk to mm -hmm. and um, say, this is what this guy is saying. What mm -hmm. do you think? Like, yeah. It's challenging me, but I don't know if he's on the right track. Yeah. I don't know if his conclusions are correct. Yeah. Maybe we're just weird like that because we do it with, with film or, or TV shows <laughs> yeah, too. Yeah. But, yeah. But, but I think we should be like in community talking about things. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. and, uh, and it's, there's, a, it's interesting. I would, in that community piece, those voices that you have, I'm sitting here and I'm going, I can, outside of our friendship, mm -hmm. there's two guys that I yep. look at that. You have uh, other friends? I do. <laughs> 
Two, right? <laughs> two. two <guys. laughs> I, there's two guys that if they if and one of them is in an academic realm, mm -hmm. um, and so he will post like books that he's reading, and he reads at a at a rate that I just can't. <laughs> Fathom, I know you right mean, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 but I'm like I'm like oh he yeah. recommended this book and I'll go and I'll I'll get it at the library mm -hmm. if I get a chance because I'm like oh he's like this one really pushes on this thought and this thought but it helps broaden my understanding it yeah. helps um it helps me develop into a more well-rounded thinker at a theological level mm -hmm. um and so find people that push you a little bit yeah um yeah. and encourage you to think and so um, I think that's a part of it in that voice piece mm -hmm. that you have. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah. Getting, getting out of the echo chamber yeah. is critical for our spiritual well being. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, because nobody has a corner, mm -hmm. uh, nobody's figured it all out. Well, it depends on who you ask. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would in my be, experience, yeah, in your experience, no one's figured it all out. The only other so. thing that I would maybe look at is if you've never read a list of logical fallacies and their definitions, <laughs> I would say that would be mm. really helpful. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, you know, you can hop on the internet and just look at list of logical fallacies and read it. Yeah. And, uh, and it's funny when, like, even when, when I sent this, say, I said, hey, maybe we could talk about this tomorrow. This morning I popped up logical fallacies because I was thinking about mm -hmm. that. And I was like, oh, look, that's in politics. That's in yeah. politics. That's in politics. And I was like, that's all it I was is. like oh, man. Yeah. It's like, wow. Yeah, yeah. And, and yet people like still, still like dismiss it or overlook yeah. it. Yep. Yep. Um, and so it, it, especially as we gauge in how, how our faith is shaped, mm -hmm. we, we should also just make sure that um, the logic we're using to really form our faith mm -hmm. um, is founded and and um, and not just like oh I, I feel this yeah yeah or not just there's, there's uh, a there's a grounding yes. to it yeah rather than just a feeling or, yeah or an agreement or yep. a tribal yeah. type of yeah. agreement that, yeah yeah I think that like those are the things that I would look at and just go like okay look at the source look at how we how like what is it that's going on and how we feel when we're reading yeah. it. Um, find voices that you trust that you can interact with mm -hmm. uh, and some that stretch you. Yep. Uh, and then I'd be like, like recognize logical fallacy. Yeah. And then if you do those types of things, um, mm -hmm. I think it, it exercises your discernment and your ability yeah. to discern yeah. Yeah. Um, in, a, in a safe way. And I think mm -hmm. in a way that honors the Lord mm -hmm. um, and honors the people that have gone before us. Yeah. Um, yep, I yeah. absolutely agree. I think yeah. that's a good place to wrap it up yeah. too. Nice. Thanks for Sweet. being with us today. <laughs> this is a good conversation, and um, I felt it was. I yeah. don't know if anyone viewing or listening <laughs> felt that it was, but um, if you stuck with us to, all the way to the end, I hope you feel it was helpful. Yeah. As always, if you have any questions, um, feel free to make your way to discoverthegrove.com and fill out one of the uh, contact forms there. We'll answer mm -hmm. your questions or at least interact with them. Yeah. We don't always have the answers, but we can interact with it a little bit. Uh, leave a comment on the YouTube channel. Subscribe and help us uh, continue to develop content for this by asking more questions and um, letting us know what you think. Yep. Till next week, thanks a lot for being here. We, uh, we appreciate your time. Sayonara. Bye -bye.